Hi, this is Melinda Art, Michael Halley. We're here with the end of March edition of City Biz. Got a little more to catch up with. Uh, we've had a little bit of a break, a couple of five, six weeks. So we're going to pack it in here for you. And I'm going to start off by asking Michael about some of these outdoor projects, city street projects, now that the weather's warming up and we might actually start seeing action. Yep. So um, the 2019 projects uh, are some street repair, but also a lot of wastewater and um, water main replacement projects. So we've got a wastewater project along Libertyville Road going west from Highway 1. And then we talked about step two, the next step of the sanitary sewer yeah. conveyance system. And so that wraps all the way from Lampson Wood around Chautauqua Park up to campus. And we had talked before that we may, the city may have to use eminent domain on a couple of properties. The good news is those property owners are back to the negotiating table. Yay. So we just have those last two properties and once we can figure out an agreeable uh, easement agreement for them, then we should be able to start moving on that. Great. And so sewer projects will continue. Yep. So street repair, um, no big ones this year. We did, the city just did apply for two grants. And these are um, uh, grants that are only available for specific roads within the city that the federal government will help us with. They're major thoroughfare roads. So we applied for Fourth Street resurfacing, and that one's in really bad shape. It's uh, one of the worst streets in town. And this would be from Broadway north to the railroad tracks. North 4th Street. So four blocks of that. Um, so if we get that grant, construction would actually occur most likely after July 2020, uh, hopefully not into 2021. So next, next late summer. And then we also applied for a grant for 32nd Street, which is west of town. Yeah. And that's for uh, 0.65 miles stretch so a bigger a longer stretch but that one also is in need of repair so this is a way that the city can can uh, do street improvement projects by utilizing these grants that help supplement our limited amount of funds that we have for street repair and doesn't burden the taxpayers so uh, it kind of goes cyclically they only have a certain amount that they can spend on us and so we kind of uh, we have to schedule certain streets at certain times and so now we're up for uh, a couple more streets and hopefully we'll get the grants and be able to move forward next year. Great and then what about the ones that I know maybe bids will start coming in or maybe they're coming in for like uh, uh, Maine I mean Burlington and 9th and yeah so Burlington and 9th we want a grant for that and so that is waiting for the DOT to give us the paperwork and once the paperwork's official, they'll actually release the funds next fiscal year, which starts July 1st. But we can do the design work before then and then be ready to, to start. Now, we are going to avoid any uh, city projects that would disrupt the streets. We will not have uh, street closures or any open holes July 25th and 26th. Oh, yes. So for RAGBRAI, we're going to try to clean things up. So that project would most likely start after RAGBRAI just to because it would probably invo avoid or involve some street closures, some lane closures yeah. and such while the work is being done. So yes, that one is on, um, is in progress. The city hall ADA compliance, so America's Disability Act compliance project is moving forward. The bids came in very favorably. The low bidder was quite a bit under about 80% of the uh, wow. engineer's estimate. So there's, extra dollars to spend. And I've explained this before on Facebook, but that grant can only be spent on that project. So people will say, why are you doing this? Why don't you do street repair? We got a USDA grant for sewer repair, which is keeping our sewer rates from going up further. And then there was some extra funds, and this was from step one, and the USDA federal organization said, you really should bring your city hall more into compliance with ADA use the remaining funds for that. So again, it's funded by a grant that had some extra funds and this is what they are saying we can use it for, we can't use it for other things. And that's very common in cities, in government, where there'll be a certain pot of funds that can only be spent in certain areas by law. 
Right, and then you have to report back and give them a detailed analysis of how the funds were spent, right? So, I mean, you yep. can't sneak any money. It has to go for that. Exactly. So, uh, you've heard of TIF or using an urban, urban renewal district. There are very specific rules about that where you collect the property tax. It has to be used within that district, so you can't collect the tax from one district and then use it somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, these are, these are different funds and they're very um, specific purposes for each one. So you can't use road use tax funds to build a rec center and you can't use um, water, water uh, the money we get from the water bills on the police. You know, it's, these are separate funds and that's the way it's done. So um, I know in the past people said, why are we building trails when we need to fix our sewer? Well, the reason is that you get grants for trails that aren't available for sewer. Yeah. We got a grant for the sewer, so that was wonderful. It wasn't available at the time we were doing the trails, but again, it's separate funds for separate purposes. Right. Now, I don't know if there are any other city street projects you wanted to mention or anything else in the budget before we get an update on RAGBRAI, but... Um, those are the main ones, and again, it's there's not a lot of street work this year. Um, it's a lot of water and wastewater, um, just different ones around town. One that's worth mentioning, just as an honorable mention, it's actually not a city project. It's privately funded, but it's, uh, it's right over here on the lot that used to be uh, Tribune Printing. Yes. And so a local uh, donor has purchased the, the property, is going to develop into a memorial park for his late wife. So it's going to be called Petra's Place. And once it's developed, has some outdoor seating and such, it'll be donated then to the city. Ah. And he really, uh, I'll say this about the donor, he, he had an eye for maintenance and not creating something that would be high maintenance. And so that was, we really appreciated. He worked with the city on that. So an example would be, people say, put in a water fountain. Well, he knows a water fountain would be beautiful in year one. And then as the, the you know, filtration system fails and the pump needs to be replaced, you know, it gets expensive. So he's just kind of, he's keeping it simple kind of an outdoor meeting, sitting area for people to, to congregate. So hopefully it'll be done in time for Rag Ride, July 25th. Okay, so he's gonna be working on that this, there's work gonna Yeah, it's supposed to start in May. Great. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how much is, is done by the big day, July 25th. Oh, it's that answer, I mean, Numerous times in the past year, I've heard people say, is anything ever going to happen? You know, yep. so now we know. Yep, that's the plan. That's the new update. So, RAGBRAI. RAGBRAI, yes. <laughs> I knew I, yeah. that you would have some kind of updates. I actually was driving on that road. I went down to the Dutchman store yesterday. So, all that part of the route, and I'm thinking, wow, they got some major hills to come in on. Uh, Libertyville? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. South of there. But anyway, let us know. what. Yeah, so the latest, um, it's less than four months away, which... Seems like a long time, but to the organizers, it feels like, you know, we really got to stay on top of it. So um, we formed a, a nonprofit. It's a temporary nonprofit called Fairfield Rag Bride 2019. Mm -hmm. the same thing in 2013. And it exists just to handle the funds because we have expenses. Um, Kaibos or porta potties need to be rented. We have to print T-shirts and sell them. Uh, we have to pay for extra law enforcement for that day. Our local police force can't handle all the, the necessary, so we bring in people from surrounding areas. Um, so there are all these expenses for communications, the shuttles. We use the, the local sure. uh, school buses, the shuttles. We have to pay for all that. And so we formed this group. The city was kind enough and generous enough to donate 20000 from local option sales tax to the, the uh, event. So that's a good kind of... Just like 2013. Yep, so we're doing that again. That's a big help with the seed funds. Uh, we'll solicit donations, not just donations, but sponsorships. So if a local business wants to sponsor a portion of the beverage garden or the stage, that's, that's negotiable. And uh, so all this is happening. Now I brought the ordinance that we, same ordinance we passed in 2013, brought it to council, it went through its first reading. And really it's designed to ensure the safety of our visitors. So we're looking at 10,000 riders and usually about another 10,000 in support. So At least, I think sometimes more, more support than riders. Exactly, so some, we're going from a town of 10,000, we'll be a town of 30,000 for one day. And 
What it does is it says if you're going to sell anything, especially food, you have to be certified, you have to have a license, and, and sets those vendor fee amounts. And that's typical, you know, uh, first Fridays, if you want to be a vendor, you pay a vendor fee. So the vendor fee is, is kind of proportionate to the crowd size. It's a very large crowd, so essentially people could sell a lot. And uh, it also talks about uh, there'll be one outdoor beverage garden in town for that day and it'll be managed by the Fairfield Rag Rye 2019 organization. So if, uh, if an establishment has an indoor liquor license, they will not be granted an, a special outdoor one for that day. It'll just be the one outdoor liquor license. And that's just, again, to simplify things. And Rag Rye organizers told us this in 2013. They're telling us this again. They want businesses to do what they normally do, but be prepared for a crowd. Businesses that try to do something special and something different. So normally they just have uh, an indoor facility and now they're gonna try to spill out onto the street and have a, something on the street or the sidewalk. Typically don't do as well as the ones who just stick with what they do and be prepared for the biggest crowd they're gonna get um, in years. Well, if that is the experience of the Rag Rye organizers, there's many decades of experience, yes. so. Yep, yeah, it's been, I mean, these, TJ, the main organizer, main director, has been doing this for uh, over 15 years. And the event, I think the event's older than me even, so it's, you know, <laughs> it's over the 44 year mark. It's been <laughs> yeah, around yeah, for definitely. a long time. And, yeah. But it, it's really, I gotta say, it's an amazing event. It brings people from other countries yeah. to Iowa to ride their bikes across our state. And they say it's not necessarily the landscape that brings them, it's the people. And so that's what it's about, is us, as a community, this will be our biggest tourist event since 2013. Yeah. It's just a, a chance to put out the welcome mat, make an impression, and the people who can come back will. If they find, if they come you know, see a restaurant and they might not have got a chance to eat at it, they might come back just to visit. So it's really a chance to, to put our best foot forward. Um, my hat is off to all of the organizers who are part of it this year. They're just so far ahead of the curve and so professional and just on top of everything. I just, it feels at this stage in the process, this year we feel so much more confident than we did in 2013 where. It's like feeling like your homework's done, exactly, you're ready for yeah. the next, I, I mean. Know, I know what's coming, I've done this yeah. before and we got so many people who helped in 2013 are back at it or if somebody isn't around, they left really good notes this time. We didn't have that last time. We made it up yeah. as we went last time. Um, though the, the main organizers, they really like help you with the schedule of what, uh, what tasks need to be completed and what time frame. So um, there's all this behind the scenes and then everyone gets to just enjoy this day. I, if you're an extrovert, you'll love it because it'll make Fairfield seem like a big city for a day. Uh, if you're an introvert, you might just want to you know, get everything you need and stay home that day. <laughs> you won't you won't find it easy to get around town. It'll be so congested. So that's another option. Or some people leave town. They're like, I'm out. <laughs> I'll see you. Make next room day. for the riders. Yeah. Well, we'll keep bringing these Ragbri updates, obviously, because Michael's on the committees every time we do a city biz. Yep. And updating. We we aim to do that at least once a month, ideally twice a month after the city council meetings, which are every other week. Yep. Right. Yep. Try to keep you updated. Uh, keep an eye out for t-shirts. That's our, our next thing. I've seen a few. I've yeah. seen some so people wearing them. That was the first them. run. We did that because we had the group going up to the Des Moines meeting. We wanted to kind of uh -huh. announce our theme. And then now we'll be unveiling, actually this year, a variety of styles. I think last year we had just one basic kind of unisex t-shirt. We're doing uh, all sorts of stuff this Tank year. Tank tops. Tank tops. Uh, Women's v -neck, tees, hoodie. V all these options. Nice. I did see nice someone with a, with a hoodie one uh, on. I've got a hoodie. Yeah, yeah. Right, so now with the everyone else can get a hoodie. Weird and wired. No, weird and anyway. Geared for weird. Geared for weird. <laughs> Geared for weird. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's uh, steampunk meets glow party is our theme. Why not have fun with that? Yeah, it will be fun. I think that's the idea. And our aim is to make City Biz fun and interesting, or at least bring you the highlights of what's going on around our city. That's right. That's what we do it. It's Michael Halley, Melinda Arndt, signing off for now. See you next time. <laughs>